Hello and welcome to the top 50 of my James Bond Villains Countdown. It's starting to get exciting now. We're getting more and more heavyweights as we go through. So let's jump straight into it with numeral 50. And we have Renard from The World Is Not Enough. Uh, the man who cannot feel any pain, though maybe he'll feel a little bit of pain if he finds out I'm only putting him this high. It's kind of odd to see Robert Carlyle playing a guy with a with a Bosnian accent in a James Bond film after seeing him in so many films like Train Spotting and things like Cracker, but I think he plays the part pretty well. He, he, he comes across as a very, very tough villain, and I love his ending in The Submarine. I, I think it's a really good film, The World Is Not Enough. I'll defend it to the hilt, despite the fact that the main villain seems to be coming out quite low. I know Elektra was around about 54, 55 on our previous segment, so... So Renard gets in there. Next we have Stamper um, from Tomorrow Never Dies. I think this is the last villain from Tomorrow Never Dies in the list. Uh, but this is the best one. We don't really get to find out much about him, apart from the fact that he's completely evil and likes to torture people. Um, the scene where he sort of seems really happy that he's about to spend two days torturing Bond with all these sharp implements is really just sinister if you if you stop to think about it for more than a few seconds there's actually um a deleted scene where um one of carver's henchmen doesn't do very well at his job on the on the ship near the end so he gives him to stamper to sort of kill as a punishment and stamper sort of grabs him by the throat throws him on the floor and stamps on his head stamps him to death that's presumably where his name comes from but they cut it um he's just a completely vicious guy a good fight at the end with bond and I think he could have come higher. I'm sort of a little bit surprised looking back that he was 49, but that's the way it came out. 48, we've got Killifer, um, a sort of minor villain from Licence to Kill. Killifer was played by uh, an actor called Everett McGill, who sort of appeared in a few things that I saw around about that time. He was uh, the bad guy in the Wes Craven film, The People Under the Stairs, a played a really freaky guy in that, and then slightly later on he was the one of the main villains in Under Siege 2, except he had his hair shaved, so you might not recognise him. I don't know what he's if he's really done anything since the sort of mid-90s, I'd, I'd sort of have to have a look, but but when he played this guy, Killifer, it was a really fun villain for the first part of Licence to Kill. He gets a really good death scene where he, he falls into this little shark pool. So I, I really like this guy. 47, we've got more Zenny. From, from Russia with Love. Now, he's more the actor who plays him, I forget his name, but he's more famous for playing General Gogo later on in the series. He, he played him for about four or five films, but I actually prefer him just in this one-shot role as more as any, a kind of background villain from, from, from Russia with Love. He's very different in all the scenes he gets. He sort of has a scene early on where he's shepherding Cleb through the Spectre training school, sort of treating her like his grandma, and then later on he's a, a kind of silent, deadly killer who stabs... Kronstein to death and then a bit further on he has his moment his confrontation with Bond where Bond gets the better of him and, and, and his fleet of little boats and more than he sort of falls to his death with on fire um though I kind of do watch that and think if you were on fire and you fall in the water would it, would it not just be a case of oh I'm all right now I can get back on the boat or something or am I under, underestimating just how bad that fire would be if it was on your back for just a few seconds but I don't know I've always wondered that 46, Gordon Bennett James Rodney at number 46. Um, yeah, not a very well-known villain, but I'm absolutely fascinated by the fact that he was in two Bond films. Like, this isn't official, um, but he dresses exactly the same, this guy, in Diamonds Are Forever and The Man With The Golden Gun. So it's, it's, it's a reasonable presumption to think that this is the same guy. And even the Bond Wikipedia sort of has the same opinion that it is the same guy. Um, I kind of like his little sort of unspoken character arc of being a gangster in Las Vegas working for Blofeld and Blofeld's taken out so he's short of money we're, we're sort of theorising here but um, Scaramanga sends out I don't know ha, ha, where does where does Scaramanga get the where does he find these people and, and bring them to Thailand how does he do that I don't know but clearly Rodney gets the cable and um, ends up having a fight with Scaramanga in their little game and he gets killed but no, it's a good villain and not a very well-known one. Uh, 45, we have Obana from Casino Royale. This is an extremely tough, intimidating guy. He completely dominates the screen in the, the few scenes that he's in. He makes Le Chiffre just seem like a little boy at the, the beginning of the movie. 
um, in, in, and later on as well at the hotel. It, he has a really, really bruising fight with Bond, one of the, the really good physical action scenes of Casino Royale. And it's sort of a shame he's not in the movie more, actually, but definitely a very good villain. 44, Dominic Green from Quantum of Solace. Like, like a lot of things in Quantum of Solace when it came out, th this role was criticised. Uh, Green was seen as a little bit of a weak villain, but I, I really like him. I think he he really fits the role. The actor who plays him just just he makes him entertaining on the screen. He has a good death in the desert, and you can sort of Im imagine him being a politician. Dare I say that? But I, I think that's the case. But yeah, Dominic Green, very very good. Uh, Forty three. We have Mister Bullion from The World Is Not Enough. I believe this is the final villain from The World Is Not Enough. A um, bit of an indulgent pick on my part. He's mainly a comedy sort of villain. You, you just you laugh at him more than anything else. I don't think he has a fight with Bond at any point. He does have an interesting change of allegiance towards the end of the film where he betrays Zakovsky, and that leads to his death scene, which is absolutely hilarious. And probably the main reason why I put him this high, because I just love that scene where he comes up the stairs and tries to bluff his way out of it, and Zakovsky just shoots him dead. It's just an absolute classic scene for me. I, I, I do really think The World Is Not Enough is underrated in so many ways. So, Mr. Bullion, 43. 42, we have Rosa Klebb, the, uh, well, a very famous villain from uh, from Russia With Love. She's She's got a lot of variety in the, in the film. I think she's um, she sort of comes across as a kind of background villain type, that the, the sort who wouldn't actually be on the front lines doing all the doing all the fighting, but she does get in a fight with Bond near the end and, and almost gets in with a little poisonous shoe thing. We've actually got James Bond Monopoly in our household and you can play as Rosa Klebb's boot. You can, you can move Rosa Klebb's boot around the board, which is kind of cool. But decent villain on the whole, I think. Um, and finally for today, at number 41, we have Blofeld from Spectre. Um, I kind of rank this Blofeld sort of in the middle of all the Blofelds. Again, another villain that was sort of criticised a little bit in a lot of the reviews for this film that I read. Uh, they sort of said, well, he's not that great in it. He's a bit of a weak Blofeld. I, I disagree. I think he was a great Blofeld. I thought he played him well. I think, if anything, he was just let down a little bit by the script. I think certainly the last part of the film in London, it, it's just a little bit weak. And Blofeld's heavily involved in that. But everything up until London, um, I think Blofeld was terrific. Very, very terrifying, I think. Um, I love the way that he sort of wines and dines Bonds and takes him on a tour of his little facility as if everything's completely normal and then suddenly he's in the torture chair. Uh, no, I think he's very, very good. And this villain could actually go higher yet because he is returning in No Time to Die. We don't know whether he's going to do anything more than just speak to Bond from his little prison cell yet. I think if that's the extent of his role, then maybe he won't get up this list that much any time in the future. But if he gets broken out and has more of a, a heavy involvement in, in the villainery, um, then who knows? Maybe he could yet elevate himself above 41. But for now, that's where he is. So that's all for today. Next time, we're going to move into the top 40. It's really getting exciting now. I'm really looking forward to doing the final four videos. So until next time, I'll say goodbye.